Hey everyone, this is Heidi Gusted from the blog Hands Occupied with another video tutorial for you today. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what the heck intarsia knitting is. <laughs> Even people who've knit for a while might never have tried intarsia knitting. So intarsia knitting is a method of doing color work in knitting that instead of carrying the yarn across the back of your work as you go, you work with different strands of yarn, often pre-measured, to work things like an isolated square of another color, for example, of knitting within a larger swatch. Often, most commonly actually, you'll see intarsia for stockinette, sti knit, stockinette stitch knitting, and it's most often worked flat. Intarsia can be done in the round, but it's complicated and not totally seamless, so for the sake of this being a 101 introduction to the technique, we're gonna just wait on that whole subject. Um, so let me show you. So this is what an intarsia swatch looks like. And this here is just a swatch I had in my stash of color work that involves stranding. So when we look at the back, you can really see the difference between the two techniques. There's all these extra lines. The back looks nothing like the front. <laughs> Um, at least with, like with intarsia, you can see that there's probably going to be, in fact, a square of cream right here in the middle of your swatch. And in the sake of this stitch with, that uses slip stitches and stranded um, color work, or fair isle is a term you might hear um, used interchangeably, interchangeably with stranded color work. Um, but this is what that other color work technique looks like. But we're going to toss that aside because we're here for the intarsia, right? So right here, um, we have done a swatch that is plain old stockinette stitch that has a two-stitch garter border so that it doesn't curl while I show you what I'm doing. And we've worked, again, that one pocket, that one square of another color of yarn right in the middle of it. So let me show you how to actually do this. For the purposes of demonstration, I have cast on and worked 17 stitches on my needle here with um, a two row or two stitch, with a two row and two stitch um, garter stitch border all the way around to prevent curling, which is the same setup I used in this swatch here, okay? So what we're gonna do is follow, if you're working from a pattern, you'll follow your pattern until you're ready to change colors, all right? And then what you're going to do is work in pattern, so follow your pattern until the point at which it wants you to change colors. So let's pretend it's right here. So we've been working in navy, and you'll notice I have an extra ball of navy here and a short length of cream yarn here. That's important. So right now, we're going to add the cream yarn and work seven stitches. So I'm gonna insert my needle and grab my cream colored yarn tail. I'm gonna give myself a tail of about six inches or so, and I'm going to wrap it over my right hand needle that I've inserted into my next stitch on my left hand needle, and letting the tail end, the short tail end of my cream yarn hang at the wrong side or the back of my work, I'm just gonna work that stitch and let that tail hang loose. It'll be a, it'll be a little bit loosey-goosey for a couple rows but I will soon show you how to manage that loosey goosiness. Next, we're gonna knit using this second color for seven total stitches, five, six, and seven. All right, there we go. Now it's time to go back to working our navy yarn, but especially for those of you who have done stranded or fair isle knitting before, you're like, but the blue yarns all the way over to the right and seven stitches is way too many stitches to carry this over the back. The float, you did that extra yarn hanging at the back is called a float. The float will be way too wide. Heidi, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing intarsia, people. So what we've got to do <laughs> is grab our second ball of navy yarn, find the end of it, and then work the remainder of our row using that navy yarn. So just like before, we're gonna hang the short tail at the back of our work and finish out our row using that navy yarn, okay? So looking at this row, 
Do, 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 there we go. Looking at this row, if we lay it down, you can now see, pardon the scraping of my circular knitting needle cords on my table here, you can now see what we've done. Okay, so there we go. Over here is our skein of navy yarn that we worked the first few rows of this swatch with. Then you can see here that we've got our short tail end of our second color, of color B here, and then we worked that for seven stitches, and then you can see the short tail of the second length of that navy yarn, and you can see we finished out the row. So in Intarsia, there are a lot of tails. FYI, don't freak out. It's really not that bad to deal with. <laughs> but this is what the first row of this swatch looks like once it's been worked. So original skein tail, short color B tail, long color B tail, and then our second ball of that navy yarn is here with its short tail and then its long end that we're working from. So one of the key things with Intarsia too is that you work it flat most of the time. And the reason you do that is because the way you work back and forth, you can use separate lengths of the same color of yarn because you're just like corn cobbing, you know, like how you eat a uh, ear of corn on the cob. You're just going back and forth with a given length of yarn. So let's use this white section as an example. You'll just be working back and forth with this white yarn over and over, which is why it can be its own isolated chunk of color, guys. Isn't that mind blowing? In terms of crazy. And then you also have your other lengths of one part of your navy yarn and the other part of your navy yarn working. So let me knit a little more to show you how we move on from here. So we're gonna turn to our wrong side and a big, big tip I have, especially for people who get anxious about their yarn getting all tangly at the back, is when you're turning from the right side to the wrong side, always turn in one direction, like the band, one direction, and then, when you've worked that row, come back from whence you came. So if you're going right to wrong, go left to right. And if you're going wrong side to right side, go right to left. So as long as you're rotating in the same way, that'll avoid introducing an extra twist in the back of your work. And that becomes especially useful when you're doing things like, don't freak out, three color intarsia, where your tails look like this at the end. But we're not at that point yet, so. Hold up. Hold your horses, Heidi, is what you're all thinking right now, right? Yeah. So again, we're gonna turn to the wrong side of our work. So this is the side with all the pearl bumps on it, right? So what we're gonna do is continue following our pattern chart, which involves just working from the first color that's available to you. So you're about to work the next row, just find the first strand attached there and get going. So we're just working from that section of navy yarn, which is, you guessed it, the section of yarn we added here after the first few cream color stitches, okay? Now what we've got to do is manage our color change. So we've worked back to where that white square is going to begin. So what we've got to do here, and I'm going to lay this flat so you can really see it, number one where we joined that, that color, that second set of navy, we're gonna grab the tail and tighten up that opening just a little so it's not so crazy loosey-goosey. Then what we're gonna do is switch to working with our cream-colored yarn. So these are the two strands in question that need to come together to continue on. I am going to take my cream yarn towards me and down, okay? And then I'm gonna take my navy yarn that I've just been working with and cross it over the top of that cream yarn that we brought to the bottom. Then what we've got to do is grab the cream yarn and bring it back up over the top. Now that seems like a whole lot of moving around, but ultimately when you're working this in a row of knitting, which I'll demonstrate in just a second, ultimately it's just a matter of continuing, knowing what to grab, doing a quick interlocking mo motion, or as um, one of my Intarsia knitting design idols, Julia Farwell Clay says, you gotta make your yarn have a handshake. And that handshake interlocks the two fibers like a real handshake so that there won't be gaps on your color change. 
So if we go back to our row, and I'll show you that interlocking in action again. So we're gonna tighten up that, that short tail of our navy yarn so we're not too loosey-goosey. Then we're gonna bring the navy yarn over the white yarn and bring the white yarn up from underneath. The phrase up from underneath is gonna be your best friend as you work in Tarja. So we're gonna bring that up from underneath. I'm just throwing it right over the top of my needle so it's back there, over there, out of the way. And so we've ha our fibers are interlocking. You can see that the white yarn is wrapping all the way around the navy right there. Now we've interlocked it and we're ready to switch over to the white section on a purl because we're on the wrong side. So there, I did the first purl stitch. And yeah, this gap is huge right now, but again, just give it a little tug and it's shored right up. Be careful not to tug it too tight because that can warp your tension a little bit. But with practice and knitting a bunch of swatches, you can totally do this. Totally, practice makes perfect. So again, we're finishing out our cream square and we're gonna tighten up that short tail just to avoid the loosey-goosey factor. Then, we bring the navy yarn up from underneath. So we cross that white yarn over the navy, bring the navy yarn up from underneath to interlock our fibers. And then we simply finish out that row. Bam. All right, so let me show you this on the right side of our work. So let's see, let me practice what I preach here. So when we were on the right side, we went right to left. Now we need to go back from whence we came left to right. I think I did that correctly. I ain't afraid of no intarsia tangles, so I don't get too worried about the direction of, my, of the way I flip my work unless I'm doing like multicolor intarsia. Um, and this is pretty com a pretty common scene at the end of a row of intarsia. They're kind of starting to braid themselves. Just keep an eye on that as you work so it doesn't turn into a full knot. Just if you don't mind the knot, which I don't, you can just ignore it for a few, a few rows until it gets like to be a little bit of a situation and then take the time to undo it. That's it. Don't overthink it, just get on with it. So in the spirit of getting on with it and in the spirit of this video not being a hundred years, <laughs> I will get on with it. So let's do a right side row and show you how to do that handshake action. So we're gonna work our pattern like our chart says, until we're ready to switch colors. So right now we've been working with this navy strand here, and we need to switch to the cream. So we need to insert our needle into the next stitch and bring the cream yarn up from underneath. So that means bringing the left yarn over the top of the cream and not doing what I just almost did, which was work from the, ta the short tail. That will spell disaster almost immediately. We're gonna bring that navy yarn over the top of the cream yarn. We're bringing that cream yarn up from underneath. We've got our interlocking action and now we can continue working across our cream color square. And then when we're ready to switch back to navy, which will be that other ball of navy yarn, again, we're on the right side, so our interlocking handshake has to happen on the wrong side of our work. We're gonna insert our needle, find the long end of the navy, bring it up from underneath, so you can see up from underneath, and you can finish out the row. Ba bam Then you just keep doing this as long as your pattern says to do it. A couple things you might be noticing besides those tangles that we've talked about is, let me just lay this bad boy out for you. Looking at this right here, you can see that there's just a little bit of a gap where we joined the cream colored yarn and that second little ball of navy yarn. Those holes will get addressed when you go to weave in your ends. You just have to make sure to sew in the opposite of, in the opposite direction of where that gap is forming. So just sew away from it um, into the same color yarn or into the seams where you've joined colors to address those holes. Um, and if you'd like a tutorial on this, there is another tutorial on my channel for you to take a look at. 
Um, this is kind of an intimidating technique, but it results in really beautiful pictures. And tarsier knitting is also sometimes called picture knitting. And if you look here at this other swatch right here that I haven't yet woven the ends on, ends on in, you can see that there's a lot of potential for doing all kinds of crazy things with intarsia. Or you can stick with the simple stockinette, isolated blocks of color, and live your best life as an intarsia knitter. Go ahead and let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and tune in again soon for even more video tutorials. Thanks.